Hello, my name is Rebecca Pham, and this is my partner, Luis Ibanez. And for our capstone, we are working with Analogic to develop an MRI gradient amplifier simulation software. So the motivation from our project comes from the gradient amplifiers, which Analogic provides for use in MRI machines. To get good MRI results and high resolution images, it is crucial to have variable magnetic fields, high power, wide bandwidth, and low noise. This is exactly what the gradient amplifier provides. In order to operate an MRI, users will specify a control waveform, and the gradient amplifier will work to provide both the power and signal amplification necessary to generate those magnetic fields. Now, under certain conditions, this input waveform can cause a gradient amplifier to exceed its operable levels, leading to system failure. There are two such limitations of the gradient amplifier which we are concerned with. The first is when junction temperatures exceed thermal thresholds. This can cause the controller to trigger a fault and go into automatic system shutdown. The second is when power demands exceed what the capacitor bank can supply. This will result in output waveform distortion as well as skewed MRI results. For obvious reasons, this is undesirable as it can lead to reduced system reliability, safety concerns, as well as increased costs to the business. So the anticipated best outcome of our project is to deliver an accurate and user-friendly software package, which will allow, will inform users of potential system failures before operation. Some key features that this will include are the electrical and thermal models, which accurately simulate the gradient amplifier response to a user input, a graphical user interface that is both user-friendly and intuitive, product versatility. Currently, our project is focused on Analogic's AG700 product line. However, we'll be building the software package in such a way that allows for future implementation of other product versions. Encryption. This is really important to Analogic as they want to keep proprietary information private and maintain that competitive advantage. And finally, a user manual. So looking at broader implications of our project, there is significant impact, including improved user experience and satisfaction, proactive prevention of any unexpected results or failures, and augmented customer loyalty and relations. I think the bigger picture for Analogic is that they'll be able to market this software package alongside their grading amplifiers so customers know that the product they'll be putting in hospitals is both safe and reliable. So the first step that we took towards the anticipated best outcome was to develop the electrical model. We were given an LT SPICE file, which simulated aspects of the gradient amplifier, such as the high voltage power supply and the controller feedback loop. Using the LT SPICE file, we were able to derive mathematical equations, which describe the electrical behavior of the gradient amplifier. And then we created a C++ program, which is the electrical model. Now, we decided to use C++ as our software development language because it allows us to develop models that are efficient in terms of runtime and processing and is also compile-based. So this will aid in the encryption factor of the project. The C++ program will accept variable user input and then perform a set of operations and then check to see if any thresholds are surpassed. If failure is predicted, they will notify users. And if not, they will continue to loop through until the simulation is complete. The program will also save relevant values and plot them for analysis. So this here is a sample output of the C++ electrical model in response to a very, very simple input waveform. On the top is the available voltage supply, followed by the current being drawn by the capacitor bank, and finally, the total current demand of the input waveform. And as I mentioned earlier, accuracy is a very big part of our project. So we verify the results from our C++ program against those from the LT SPI simulation. And as you can see, they are very similar. I'd also like to mention we are currently working on the thermal model. Um, Feature-wise, it's very similar to the electrical model, except that is currently based off the C2118 and not the AG700. So now that we've talked about the models, um, we can go into how this will fit into the software. To begin with the software development of our project, we narrowed down our user experience to something that was more concrete to figure out what steps we really wanted our users to take in order to get the results they need. So we came up with the user flow where you Start off at the home interface of the software, choose which MRI aggregate amplifier you want to run the software on, which right now is just the AG700. Select which predictive models you want to use, because if you're confident that your input waveform won't go over the threshold of either electrical or thermal domain, you can turn that model off to save a lot of time while running the simulation at the cost of a little bit of accuracy. Then you select which input waveform you want to put in and the appropriate settings, and then you run your simulation. From here, you'll be able to view your output waveforms in live time generating on the plots that we have, and then be able to save these results in CSV files. If you already have a report saved, you can simply load that into the software again and be able to view those results. We use this to guide our implementation of the user interface and incorporate all aspects of it and more, which we use as a basis for designing the back-end structure of our code. 
When designing the back end, we wanted to make sure that our code was structured in a way that was modular, or in other words, makes it easy for Analogic to update the software when they want to add more compatibility to for their other product lines. We also had an issue when designing the simulation algorithm where we're dealing with very large data, si data files sizes, leading from megabytes to even gigabytes of size. So we decided to break it down to steps where you run the simulation in batches. So you run the first batch, you get the simulations results from there, and use that as the basis for the next batch, and continue going until you reach either the end of the file or a shutdown. After that, your results will be saved and sent to the interface for viewing. Now that we've gone over our key accomplishments, our remaining challenges for this next semester are figuring out and developing the thermal model and electrical model, incorporating these models into the back-end code structure, and then linking the back-end with our interface so the right information is being displayed for our users to see. Once we have a completed software package, we'll debug it and make sure that there's no unexpected crashes that would disrupt the user flow. We'll also be writing a software manual. We already have most of these components completed, but it's just a matter of linking them together to make it go smoothly. We'd like to thank everyone who's helped us with our project thus far. Thank you.